Hi everyone, welcome back to Friday Sews, the in-car edition. <laughs> um, so I am on my way home, um, I am going to pick up the husband and we are taking a trip to Franklin's in Salisbury. Um, I was on the phone to them yesterday and having a bit of a discussion um, because I need a new overlocker. Um, so I've decided after last week's mess of a Friday sews video where I actually got no sewing done whatsoever last week um, and I ended up almost losing my mind trying to pull my sewing room apart to make it more functional for me. I have decided that I do want to be able to have my overlocker out on the side on one of my work stations um, permanently. Because of it being tucked away all the time it had become the sort of weird sort of thing in the corner that I didn't want to look at or go anywhere near because I just wasn't enjoy using it and I decided that rather than pay out more money to have it serviced than I actually bought the thing for in the first place um, because I bought it used I would put it to one side for now I'm gonna get it serviced at some point because it is a baby lock it's a decent machine it has a very powerful motor on it it's still works it just needs a bit of love care and attention basically um and then i will hopefully be able to then once that's done i will hopefully be able to use it as a sort of in-house overlocker for when i hold socials so if someone doesn't want to bring an overlocker i can set it up with a neutral colored thread and if anyone needs to use it it's there for them for them to use basically um and also my husband has also started dabbling in thinking about doing some um, garment sewn for himself. I want to teach him how to make a classic um, men's shirt so that he can make all of those. Um, so it would be handy to have a backup around the house anyway because that is the only overlocker in the house. Um, and I also want to have a, I, so basically my thing is today is I'm going to Franklin's, I want to have a look at the Juki MO2000 QVP which is their air threader uh, it's the mid-range air threader. So they do the MO1000, which is their entry-level air threader. One of the best price air threaders on the market, if you ask me. Um, and I want to have a look at the 2000, and I also want to have a look at the 2500, which I believe is the Sumato. Um, in the US, it's it's um, it's retailed under the model number 2800. Um, I have no idea why. Do you do some weird things with their model numbers for different markets? But for the UK, it's the MO2000. 500 it's got a knee lift on it it's semi-industrial it's got a tractor foot so i think i'm going to end up with the 2500 but i could be wrong the mo2000 qvp the one that the glorious jen from today and jen's sewing room and my lovely friend judy have got is a fantastic machine um and i might end up with one of those instead who knows um so I'm going to go and have a look at those um, and I will hopefully get hubby to film me playing around with them in store. Um, I was going to get another baby lock but then I thought about it and I thought, you know what, let's be fair, baby locks machines, yes they are brilliant, yes they do with their job very well, um, but at the end of the day, Juki made baby lock machines for years and years and years before baby lock started branding them as their own brand. Um, and Juki also made all of Benina sewing machines, uh, not sewing machines, sorry. Juki made all of Benina's overlockers, serges, and cover stitches for years um, that were just rebranded as Benina's. So why go for a Benina or a baby lock when you could just go to the company that made them in the first place? Um, so that is my logic, and I love Juki. My Juki Industrial is the best machine that I've ever used. My Juki TL is incredible. I absolutely love that on my frame when I'm using it on the quilt frame. And I thought, you know what? I'm stick with the brand that I trust and I know, and it always works for me and never seems to fail. I never seem to get a skip stitch. I never have a missed stitch. I just don't have any issues with them. They are, in my eyes, the best. So. I will catch up with you in a bit and let you know what I think of the MO2000 and the 2500, how I get on with them and we shall see what happens. So we've just left Franklin's and we are in tow with a, in tow, is that the right word? Yeah. In tow with a Juki 2000 MO2500 Sumato semi-industrial overlocker well it's got industrial technology so this one is the one with the tractor foot which has a split hinge 
which means that when you are going over lumps in fabric like the to like two seams that meet when you're using sweatshirts in or um, denim or anything that's thicker the foot actually has a hinge in the center like where your knuckles would be here and it actually bends over the two seams so you get a level feet the whole time so you don't have the problem of it jamming or getting stuck or the feed dogs trying to pull it through at a different rate so for sealing edges of foam bags and different things it's brilliant so i will show you when we get home what it looks like so i have i have just got back from franklin's with the beautiful mo2500 tomato which is the newest well one of the newest overlockers that juki offers and it is truly something very pretty and very very exciting because it is partially it is partial semi-industrial so for me working on a semi-industrial level to a certain degree this works really well so I'm just going to get these um, great big staples out. They really do pack their machines well. Is um, the way that Juki does it. So I'm probably going to speed this up a sec. And we'll get this open. I've got the staples in them. Right, so let's open it up, shall we? So I have cleared a space. I have got rid of... Well, I've moved my old baby lock out of the room. So in here we have the knee lift, part of the um, telescope, telescopic thread stand. I've got the foot pedal, which is the same as the one for my baby lock. We've got a whole host of feet. There's the curved foot, there is a pack of Schmetz needles, which are a mix of 80, 12s, 90, 14s. But I'll go through the rest of that in a moment. We have got the thread catcher tray, which I am super excited about having one of them because I've never had a machine that's got one. And then we have the beautiful Juki MO2500 in here. So I'm just gonna lift her out and then I'll be back with you to go through some of the details. So I'm just gonna pop everything together and then we will get a good look at everything on the machine. So that goes in the top there. That then goes into the little hole at the back. You'll have to excuse me with my back to you. So that is all of that set up. I'm gonna remove blue tape off of everything here. It's got a thread cutter on the edge, which is always nice because it won't be blunt because it's new. So this has got an automatic needle threader for both needles, which you have the ability to switch just by pressing this little lever here, which switches from the left to the right needle and vice versa. It has a rolled hem flip, uh, flipper switch here, which you literally flip that over and you flip this here switch here which drops your stitch finger and this turns your machine into a rolled hem just by pressing that one button there's a little bit more tape here and that is the machine ready to be threaded so before i thread the machine and switch it on i am going to go through what it comes with accessory wise so this is the, as I say, this is the Juki MO2500. In the US, this is marketed as the 2800. Um, so it comes with a pack of Universal Schmetz needles, which are, in my eyes, the best brand. You've got your spool caps and your spool nets. You've got some oil to keep the machine oiled, which is really good because you don't normally ever get oil with machines other than Juki. And you get a really decent sized bottle of oil as well to keep it all lubricated. You've got your soft cover there. There is a 
multi-tool as per usual. There is a blunt ended needle in here for threading your um, chains back through the um, stitching to lock off your stitches. There is this foot here, which is the curved foot, which allows you to get right in and see when you're sewing curves. And then we have the tractor foot, which I'm just going to quickly pop all of this back in there and then I will go through the tractor foot with you. You also get a little wire in here to clean out your air threading system if need be and to help feed through difficult um, to thread threads, like if you're using woolly nylon and different things like that. But I have heard that you don't this machine doesn't really have issues with any of the threading, but that is there just in case you need it. So this machine comes with something called the tractor foot, which is a semi-industrial um, foot that Juki has developed to basically overcome any issues with large bulky seams. So as you can see, this foot is articulated in the centre. So as the machine is sewing over a thick fabric, if you go over a seam where it's really chunky, this foot will actually pivot underneath here, like so. So it will actually walk over any of the large bulky seams that you're sewing. So it's got a spring loaded action at the front and in the middle. And then it's got the dual hinge on there. Um, and as I say, it's called the tractor foot. So it's really, really helpful to have that. It's something that I've never seen on a overlocker before. And I think it's going to benefit me hugely when I'm making things like sweatshirts um, or if I'm making jeans with like, multiple seams or if I'm going over binding and things like that with my bag making. So I'm going to switch the machine on. I am going to position the hand wheel in the correct position. I'm then going to lift my presser foot and I'm going to take this sample stitch out, including all of the threads that are in the machine, because I'm going to re-thread it from scratch. So this is, it does actually come with um, threads still in the machine, so you could tie it off if you wanted to, but I want to re-thread it completely. So I'm just going to cut that off, I'll keep that little sample stitch there, and I'm going to pop all this extra thread in the waste bin. So I'm going to start off by threading the loopers, which is the air mechanism. So I'm I made sure my presser foot is up so that my tension discs are open. I'm going to go through the back, through my tension disc, down through here, into the thread guide, and then into my looper. But first of all, I need to line up my um, hand wheel to the correct line, engage. my air threading ports so i'm just going to pop that lower looper into the little hole and just tuck plenty of thread in press my little button which is a lot louder than i expected it to be <laughs> i'm going to thread my upper looper now So through those tension guides, making sure that it's definitely seated in that tension disc so I don't cause any issues with tension. I'm going to tuck the end into my threading port, just feed it in a couple of millimetres and then it has gone through. So I'm just going to quickly whiz that over the top there and through. I'm going to just pull a little bit more thread through on that lower looper so that it comes through here and so that I can feed it through underneath the foot towards the back of the machine. I'm then going to take my needle threads and thread these so this is the green one which will go through the front section here so I need to take this little piece of cardboard out so under here Cross up, down, and into the right needle. Oh, who's me trying to do this? Then I could just use the needle thread. So if you engage the needle thread, ah, oh, okay. Right. So what I now need to do is disengage my looper feeds and then just 
turn my hand wheel so that my hand wheel is lined up with the line on the side because otherwise this is how you damage the needle threader. So that is the right hand needle threaded. machine and then I need to my left hand needle through here around the back down into the left hand side I'm going to pull my needle over to thread my other one Hand needle threaded. So theoretically now I should be able to close this door. I'm just going to make sure that everything's disengaged as it should be, which it is. My stitch finger is up. It's not set to rolled hem. My tensions are all on its manufacturer's standard, which are four. My stitch length, my differential feed is on neutral. My stitch length is on two and a half. Pop my little cover in. And then we'll get a scrap of fabric. So I've just found a nice little scrap, dark green piece of fabric so that we can see the stitching properly. So I'm just gonna lift up the front of my foot here and we'll give it a go and see if it stitches right. <laughs> First thing I've noticed is one, how evenly it feeds, and two, how evenly it cuts as well. So we've got a lovely stitch across the top there. also incredibly quiet compared to any overlocker that I've ever used before which is just bonkers so there we go our beautiful new overlock stitch so that is it from me for Friday Sews this week I will be back with you next week um, if not before and I will give you a little update on how I'm getting on with the new Juki. So thanks for watching, I will see you all soon, take care, have a good weekend and happy sewing. Bye for now.